So I think it's obvious that progressives like Rashida Tlaib, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, they are all forcing incumbent Democrats and Democrats who have been around in politics for decades to do better. They're forcing them to actually put up, come up with these new innovative policy ideas, which aren't technically new. They're just new to us because we're finally talking about them again. But I mean, it makes them look bad when you see all of these young up and comers like AOC start proposing all of these bold policy ideas, progressive ideas, and then automatically get more popular than they've ever been. Some of these Democrats like Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden, and they don't like that. So this is why we see them take whatever chance they can to shit on progressives like AOC. Joe Biden did it in an interview with Chris Cuomo on CNN. How do you convince the party that these more advanced ideas, like all in on Medicare for all, that matter to them? I would call them advanced. Them, I would but they're call popular them, in the party. Well, by the way, watch. That's what this election is about. I'm really, I'm happy to debate that issue and all those issues with my friends, because guess what? Again, look who won the races. Look who won last time out. We had, and by the way, I think, I, I think Ocasio-Cortez is a brilliant, bright woman, but she won a primary. The, in the general election fights, who won? Mainstream Democrats who are very progressive on social issues and very strong on education, health care. Look, my North Star is the middle class. When the middle class does well, everybody does well. I am thoroughly just, I'm done with Joe Biden. I mean, I've been sick and tired of him, but the more I hear from him, it's not just that I like him less. I hate him more, and I use hate very seldomly because I think it's a strong word, but he represents everything that's wrong, not just with the Democratic Party, but American politics in general, like this adherence to neoliberalism, which is a conservative ideology. Like, I'm sick of it. Think about what he said. So when it comes to the issue of Medicare for all, he said that he wouldn't call an idea like that advanced. Um, so what's his plan? If Medicare for All isn't an advanced plan, then clearly he must have something superior to Medicare for All. What is it? He would bring back the individual mandate from the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an advanced idea, guys. Something that everyone hated before, that was dismantled by Republicans. That's an advanced idea. Like, what use do we have for people like Joe Biden? What use do we have for them in 2019? They bring nothing to the table. What policies has Joe Biden proposed? He's proposing nothing. What is he even running on other than, you know, uh, I'm not Donald Trump, please vote for me. And also, I'm sorry, uh, not once, not twice, but three times. I know I have to keep apologizing, but, you know, vote for me because something, something, I'm more electable. I mean, what is he bringing to the table? If you support Joe Biden when there are more than 20 options, what is wrong with you? I mean, you don't even have to support Bernie, even if you should. But when there are so many options, if you support Joe Biden, you clearly need to consider what you're doing with your life. Because how could you support this man? How can you listen to him speak when he is so vapid and represents nothing and still say, you know what, I'm going to support him over everyone else? It, it just makes no sense to me. Now, let's get to the argument he used against AOC and why we shouldn't really opt for more left-wing policies, you know, the, the kind that she's promoting. He says, look who won the races. Look who won last time. How about rather than looking at 2018, which is one year where there were a ton of progressives and a lot of progressive momentum, let's go ahead and look at a bigger snapshot in time. Let's look at a 10-year period. Let's look at the time when you and Obama were in power. You lost more than a thousand seats in state legislatures across the country. So how can you possibly say that your brand of centrism is what's going to uh, help us going forward when it decimated the party, Joe Biden? How can you possibly say that with a straight face? How can you say that? He doesn't know what he's talking about. Either that or he does know the statistics and how the party was decimated under his leadership. And maybe he just doesn't care. Maybe he's lying because he's looking out for his own ass. You know, it, it really... It behooves Joe Biden to get us to think that centrism 
is the way we should be going because that's what's going to help him win the nomination. He also says, I think Ocasio-Cortez is a brilliant, bright woman, but she won a primary in the general election fights. Who won? Mainstream Democrats who were very progressive on social issues and very strong on education and healthcare. So what he really wants to say is, look, in this last election, centrists were the ones who won because they were progressive on social issues and strong on healthcare education. So he really wants to say it was centrist, but he doesn't use the word centrist in particular, and he uses the word progressive to describe them. <laughs> in other words, I'm going to call them progressive, even though in actuality I'm trying to promote centrism and moderation. He's doing that, and he's choosing his words very wisely because he absolutely knows that that's not how you win a primary when the party is screaming for you to represent their ideas and stop trying to win over moderate Republicans. Because again, this strategy has lost. Trying to construct some type of a platform that appeals to Trump voters who the Democratic Party lost in the Rust Belt is a fool's game because you didn't lose in 2016. You haven't been losing because you haven't appealed to enough moderate Republicans, so-called moderate Republicans. You lost because you're losing support among your own base. I don't even have to say this. We all know it. If you want to win, you energize your own base, get out the vote, go after non-voters. This is how you win elections. You don't win by convincing people who support Donald Trump to vote for you because you're going to lose if you do that. Hillary Clinton lost by trying to do that. This strategy is a proven failure. So by trying to double down on a losing strategy, it just shows that contrary to popular belief, you aren't the most electable Joe Biden. And I don't even really have to go on much further about this because I think you all know. And Rashida Tlaib, who is a progressive, she put it best. She said, when will Dems realize that it's only when more people like us come out to vote that we all win depending on old ass approaches of persuasion doesn't work good luck in persuading trumpers it's a dangerous ideology that we're fighting against not just trying to win a seat and she's exactly right and if you want to know why this strategy doesn't work republicans have been winning right they've been very successful under joe biden and uh, and uh, uh barack obama but ask yourself this were they successful in trying to appeal to moderate democrats like how many times did you see ted cruz for example try to win over quote unquote moderate democrats did they win by doing that D did they win by trying to appeal to you or me absolutely not they won by moving further to the right and energizing their base appealing to their right wing base by getting more xenophobic more extremist in their views that's how they won. So if it worked for them by appealing to their base, then for some reason, Democrats haven't taken a hint that if we do the same, if we appeal to the left wing base, we could also win. But it's because they know what will and won't be conducive to an electoral victory. What they're trying to do is appease their donors because the donors overall are right wing economically. So they can be as progressive as they want to be on social issues. But when it comes to economic issues, they know they've got to walk a fine line between trying to appease their left wing base and also trying to appease their corporate donors, which in their view is more important. That's what this is about. But getting to the responses here to this, Rashida Tlaib was correct and Bernie Sanders also came out to defend AOC, saying, I'm proud to be working with AOC and so many other Democrats Democrats to pass Medicare for all, debt-free college, and a Green New Deal. This is the agenda America needs and that will energize voters to defeat Donald Trump. That's a key word there, energize voters. AOC then responded saying, thank you, Senator Sanders. It's an honor to work alongside you and the millions of other people fighting for education, health care, and a living wage as rights. So it's important that whenever a centrist repeats the same line that, oh, well, you know, you can't go too far to the left, you've got to hold the center. It's really important for everyone who is perceived to be far left to come out and rebut this notion because it's harmful. It literally leads to Republicans winning, which means we get harmed because of incompetence, because of people like Joe Biden and even Nancy Pelosi, who just can't take the hint that Trying to maintain the center is a losing strategy because all you do is you suppress your own base because they don't want to come out and vote for you if they don't perceive there will be some type of substantial payoff. Because if they just see, oh, well, you know, 
Democrats, they're a little bit better than Republicans, but it's really not a big enough difference to where I feel as if it's worthwhile to come out and vote and wait in line for hours. If you don't actually do something for them, then they're not going to come out and vote for you. It's as simple as that. So whenever this line is repeated, we all have to unequivocally denounce it because it's wrong. And most importantly, it's incredibly harmful. And I wish that Bernie Sanders, I'm glad he defended AOC here, but he's got to take the gloves off. He's got to take the gloves off and actually go after this flawed line of thinking because Joe Biden isn't the only one who says this. Other Democrats repeat it. And it's wrong. Like we just saw what happened in 2016 when Democrats tried to utilize this strategy. It didn't work. But in 2018, when you had strong progressives come out, turnout was up in a midterm year, and additionally, they took back the House. So we have the winning strategy. Bernie Sanders has the winning message. So he needs to take the gloves off and, you know, not just defend AOC, but also respond directly to Biden's claim and call out Biden by name and tell him why he's wrong because Bernie Sanders is right here. He saw how Kamala Harris got a boost in the polls when she went after Joe Biden directly and fiercely. So it would behoove him, I think, to do the same exact thing, especially because he has the winning argument and he's right. Democratic voters, they care about electability. So if Bernie Sanders can appeal to that, especially knowing how correct he is and how he has the right argument in terms of electability, this can only help him. So you've got to take the gloves off and go after Joe Biden hard. Hit him hard because he's wrong and we need to dispel this myth because that's what it is, a myth. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.